Hey there, beer drinkers. Welcome back. If it's your first time, welcome to my channel. I'm Sean. Today I'm doing something a little bit local to me. Um, I guess local is like an hour, hour and a half away. But this is a bit of history. Um, it's not the exact recipe. They weren't able to find it, but they were able to find the label from a 1930s beer. And it is Glen Ale. Um, Watkins Glen, Watkins, I think it was like Glen Brewing or Watkins Glen Brewing did it back in the day, but Finger Lakes Distilling found the label when they first started getting around. Pretty windy out. Hopefully it's not too bad for the audio. Um, but this is a collab they did with Lucky Hair Brewing. He's both up in Seneca Lake, um, just north of Watkins Glen. It's considered a traditional ale, coming in at 4.3% alcohol. Um, all New York ingredients, but there is the classic label. This is the original label of Glen Ale. Um, like I said, it's not the exact recipe. They weren't able to find the recipe, but they, they believed they got as close as they think they could have to what it would have been like. So I've been excited. I've seen this around, and I just never really looked like thought to pick it up and look at it. I finally picked it up, did a little bit of the history on it, and it's pretty cool. So... And I've been waiting for a nicer day so I could do this outside. And it's probably as nice as we're going to get right now. Um, it's in the 40s or 50s. Well, right now it's in the 40s for sure. But it's supposed to get in the 50s at some point today, I believe. And then it's supposed to get cold and rainy. It's supposed to be rainy at some point today. Um, it's got some bubbles sticking there. But clear, straw, golden yellow. You know, very clear, very, very see-through. Um, about a half a finger of foam, white head, pretty bubbly. It got that sweet, malty. Almost smells like a, best way I can put it, it smells like a Budweiser. Um, Budweiser, Bud Light. It's got that yeasty cracker almost like cardboard boxy kind of a smell to it a little bit of sweetness to it but not like a sweetness like I could pick up any fruit just like a generic sweetness going on with it um I don't know if any hops or even I couldn't find any hops I know it talked about malt and stuff like that but I couldn't find anything about hops so I'm not even sure if there's any hops in this I'm assuming there is I'm just not sure what kind of hops because they're very much about like the malts and stuff like that. So this is very much more of an adjunct. Um, yeah, it just gives me that macro lager kind of a smell. It's got that macro lager kind of a taste, I'm going to be honest. Um, I wasn't expecting a whole lot. It does have that macro lager kind of a taste. But it's not, it's got a little bit more flavor to it than what you would get with just like a Budweiser or Coors or a Miller's. There is a sweet, sweet sweetness to it. But you definitely get that yeasty cracker, to you. not even so much biscuit, but more cracker. Um, almost like they did the rice with this. I'm not sure if they used the rice in this recipe. Um, it definitely has that more rice kind of a taste to it like they would put in there. Um, it's okay. Good for a summertime drink. Would I pick up a six pack of this? Probably not. Um, it's all right. I'm going to give it a 3.4 out of 5. It's nothing spectacular. Um... I like that it's supposed to have some history to it, and it ties up to Watkins Glen. Uh, me and the wife love Watkins Glen. I love going up there. But, yeah, it's just nothing nothing special, which is unfortunate. But I guess back then, that's what you were, would have had more. You wouldn't have had, like, the crazy, you know, what we have nowadays. So it was more simple lager, you know, ale. Yeah, 3.4 out of 5. Um, the history is what got me with this. 
it's an alright brew. But thank you for watching. Until next time, cheers.